You are listening to the On Purpose Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the On Purpose Podcast, and thank you again from the bottom of my heart for joining me this week. Um, I want to thank those of you that uh, that were with me last week as I shared the story of my father-in-law, Pops, and uh, what he taught me, and I, and I hope you got some good reflections out of that one. We're going to switch some gears this week, episode 178. And uh, kind of go inward. And, and I really like this. So before we get started, I want to thank all of you Patreon members whose financial contributions and memberships allow us to continue to to produce this show every week for over three and a half years and continue to, to grow our purposeful community and reach our goal of becoming one of the most influential podcasts in the world. So if you're interested in going deeper with the show and helping contribute and push us further, please visit patreon.com backslash the On Purpose Podcast, and you'll see the membership options waiting for you. All right, this week, team, we're going to – I like this one. I, I've been thinking on this one for a while and writing it up and making sure I got the message the way I want it before we, we deliver it. And this is uh, – I'm going to call this one No, No One – can do this for you. No one can do this for you. And I want to start off by by saying you're not going to find this at the bottom of a bottle of alcohol. You're not going to find it in your prescription drugs, your cannabis, or at the end of some kind of needle. No matter how much family, friends, and partners tell you they can't give you enough of it. No one, no thing will ever totally fulfill you in this area. Because that is no one, no thing can make you love yourself. Recently I've been talking with several young men who are dealing with addictions and life turmoils. One is entering rehab for the third time, yet he prefaces that by telling me he's already failed it twice, so he's not sure how it's going to go a third time. How can he possibly succeed if he's already focused thinking of and energetically talking about his past failures before he's even stepped foot through the door. If he's seeing himself as a failure and as someone whose addiction is letting everybody in his world down, how can he possibly find success in beating it? The other is suffering through an ended relationship and likes to blame its failure on everything around him. His former partner, his employer, rough childhood, everything is to blame except the one consistent in all of it, and that's him. How can either of these two or any of us expect better outcomes for our future if... We don't first find peace with ourselves and our past. You see, if every time I look in the mirror, all I see is my faults and my failures and my disappointments, and we allow that to become my self-talk, we allow that to be what we portray to the world, our insecurities, our worries, our doubts, then no one anywhere and no thing can reassure us or love us enough back to make us love ourselves. So I want to talk this week about how do we find love with ourselves? How do we find peace with our past? Right? You see, everybody's going to have tough times. Everybody's going to have times where things don't go right. But the one thing that cannot change is how I feel about myself, how much I love myself. 
You see every failure, every addiction, every heartbreak, every mistake, every scar, every blemish is there to teach us something. It's there to reveal something within us. So here's something that I like to do to remind myself of my greatness. Right? And you say, man, that's pretty arrogant. You think you're great. No, I do believe I'm great. And I believe all of you are great. And I think when you look in that mirror every day, you should start by telling yourself how great you are. Because you're the only one that can be great at being you. Nobody else can give you anything that makes you a greater you unless you want to be a great you. So I talk about my greatness, my uniqueness, and my love for myself. And it's weird because I'm a reverse engineer how I do that. Right? So you write down two or three things it is about yourself that generally you don't like. Or that cause you a negative emotion. Write those things down. Then next to each of those, write down what it is that you learned from that. That scar on your forehead that you're very self-conscious about. Well, it came from an epic mountain biking trip. So you learned about mountain biking. You had an epic trip with a moment in time. So that's a positive. And then next to it, write down how it makes you unique to the world. That scar, that blemish, the addiction you fought and overcome. How does that make you unique to the world? You see, we're all unique and we're all very necessary in this world. Because no two humans are alike. And we each have a story the world desperately needs if. Only we can understand it and love our own story. You see, it's not in our settling to conform and to fit in and be like everybody else that makes us great. It is in our adversity. Our scars, our blemishes, our failures, our mistakes, our shortcomings that make us unique. When I was, uh, I don't know, early teen, I had messed up teeth. <laughs> and I had to wear headgear. And, you know, this was, I'm a little older than some of you on here, so I don't know how headgears move forward in the dental world now, but back when I had to wear it, that shit was not comfortable and it was not pretty. I had, like, these big straps around my head and this metal cage went around my face and, like, pushed my teeth back. I think it was making a space or something. Honestly, don't even remember why I had to wear it, but I had to wear it, and it hurt like a mother. And I had to wear it when I slept, so you couldn't sleep on your side of your face because you had like a, like a fucking, like a football helmet around your face. It was terrible. So I went through that. Had to get some teeth pulled and got my braces. Went through all the pain of braces and all that stuff. Got my teeth straightened. Got the braces off, got my retainer, went away from college. Well, the retainer was, was too big for my mouth, and it kept cutting the back of my, my mouth. And uh, I didn't come home from college, you know, like college, a freshman, so I wasn't coming home every weekend. So I dealt with it, and then uh, I came back home, probably like Thanksgiving break or whatever, and went to the dentist office, and he was out of business. He was closed. He was gone. So I couldn't get a new retainer. And I'm sure I could have looked and found a new dentist, orthodontist, whatever, and, and done all that. But for whatever reason, I just didn't. So I was like, well, whatever. I'll just, you know, I don't know. I think my teeth will just stay straight. Well, slowly over time, them suckers did not stay straight. And for a lot of, a lot of my earlier life, I was very conscientious about not having straight teeth. And I was very conscientious about my smile and worried about was it, what were people thinking? You know, and over time I overcame it by just talking about like my crooked teeth, my crooked smile, if you will, is my uniqueness. 
It's one of those things that separates me from other people. And I started just embracing it because I wasn't going to go through the pain. I mean, I'm an adult now. I could do braces again and all that stuff. But I was like, I don't want to. Like, I kind of like having crooked teeth. I kind of like that being one of my uniquenesses. And uh, it was funny when I was leaving the police department, one of my good friends and his card, that's what he wrote is he's going to miss seeing my crooked smile in the hallways. You see, I took something that had made me self-conscious, that made me doubt myself, that made me worried. And I remembered that that story of how my teeth went from crooked to straight back to crooked is one of my uniquenesses. And it, it, it made me appreciate that while many, many people have perfectly straight teeth, not everybody has crooked teeth. So that's kind of one of my things. And instead of feeling bad for myself or shying away from opportunities to smile or take pictures, I just embrace it. It's just part of what I got. And I feel like it separates me. And for these guys I've been talking to in all you in your life, the addiction problem, whatever the problem you see, whatever the fault or the shortcoming you see, is an opportunity to find strength. You see, like this guy's addiction problem is an opportunity for him to exercise discipline in his life, to find a new passion, to trade the synthetic high for a natural one that comes with living a full life. It's a chance to get clean and become a better example for others on that same path. My young man dealing with the breakup. It's all about faults and failures. They're designed to help you grow. To realize your own self-worth outside of any other relationship or any other being. But both these guys and many of us, we can't be all that we're supposed to be for everybody else. We can't be all that we're going to be in the world. But first, we don't love ourselves. And to first love yourself is to accept your faults, your shortcomings, your blemishes, your scars. Your failures. See, one of my favorite songs is called Crooked Smile by J. Cole. And in it, he has a lyric that says this. My shit is crooked. Look at how far I done got without it. I keep my twisted grill just to show them kids it's real. We ain't picture perfect, but we worth the picture still. I like that last line. We ain't picture perfect, but we're worth the picture still. You don't have to be picture perfect to be in the picture. My crooked smile still shows up in the pictures, and I'm proud to be there. So this week, let's work on really finding out how to love ourselves so that in turn we can better serve our world. And we can better show up in our uniqueness. And we can better show up and allow whatever specialness it is that's within us to really go out to everybody in the world who may be looking for it. Because you will never be who you can become until you first love who you are. Thank you all for joining me again this week. Give me I'm always down to hear your thoughts and comments, whether it's uh, on our social media or email. And I want to tell you guys how humbled I am to have this place in your life and to, to continue to show up and serve you. Have a great week. And remember, team, life is far too short to live any other way than on purpose. We'll see you all again next week.